Vice President Yemio Shibajo is now in charge. President Muhammad Buhari announces as he goes on a medical trip. And many presidential aspirants should have been in jail, says former President Ulushagum Basonjo. Well, this is Plus Politics. I'm Mary Ann Cole. As President Muhammad Buhari departed the country for the United Kingdom for a medical checkup, he stated that the Vice President, Yemi Oshibajo, is in charge of the country and its affairs. At the moment, it has not been confirmed whether or not the President transmitted a letter to the National Assembly handing over power to the Vice President pending his return to the country. Now, when asked if his absence won't affect the state's functioning, he said, well, I do not claim to be doing the work alone. The government is fully represented. The vice president is there, said Mr. President. Well, joining us to discuss this and more is Richard Wokocha. Uh, he's an associate professor of public law at the River State University. And, of course, Ayodeji Awobidiye. Awobiyide uh, is a legal practitioner and is also joining us. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having us. Great. I'm sorry that I murdered your name, but I'll try to call it better next time. Um, but I'm going to start with you, Professor. Um, this is not the first time that the president has been urged to transmit power to his vice president, being that that should be the modus operandi, as um, you know, the Constitution um, prescribes. But then we've seen back and forth similar to this, even though the president has just gone for two weeks. Uh, is this much to do about nothing? Are we fussing over nothing? Or should this be done by the book? Professor, I think that you're muted. Uh, can you unmute yourself? All right. I think it's on now. Yes, we can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. So I think it should be done by the books. Uh, there is no reason why it should be done different. It's, it's it's a formal, regular team. And if the president is going to be away for two weeks, even if he's not going under, uh, under the surgeon's uh, knife and he's not going to be unconscious, he should simply transmit power to his vice president. That's why he has a vice president. Uh, there is no reason uh, for uh, him not to do so. Absolutely no reason for him not to do so. Why, why do you think it's very difficult for this president? Because he seems to be the one over and over uh, that we've had to have this conversation about. Uh, why does it seem so difficult for Mr. President to hand over power to his vice president? Is it that um, he doesn't feel the need to, or is it that he, he feels that he's above the law or the constitution? It does not matter to this president. Uh, perhaps um, one conclusion we can draw is probably that uh, he feels uh, he's not going in for something serious that's going to take time, uh, and therefore that is not necessary to do so. But uh, that reasoning will be, in my opinion, absolutely wrong. If he's going to be out from the country and uh, the work of the president needs to be done, he should ensure that the office can run in his absence and transmit power. It does no harm to him or the person to whom he is asked to transmit power. It's a, it's a procedure. It's a formal procedure that he should comply with. Hmm. Let me come to you, uh, Ayodeji. Um a lot of people are still contemplating um, if the president has really sent a letter to the National Assembly or not. And then there's a buzzword that's been out there where the president did not just mention the vice president, but he also mentioned two other people uh, in the cabinet saying these people will be running the government. Um, for you, when, when you heard or you read that line, what message were you getting? Oh, thank you. Um, I think as it relates to that news report, um, um, if we sit down here and we're only speculating about whether or not the uh, president indeed transmitted the letter, um, one of the many problems of this APC government is the lack of transparency at times. And, and this is one of the instances when they should have been very transparent, very open about it. 
Um, we would not be here debating this issue if we had seen a copy of the letter, if the Senate had confirmed to us that they received the letter, and then the Speaker had also confirmed that they received the letter from the presidents. So all of this is just conjecture. And from the report that I read, um, he says that he had handed over power to the pres vice president, and of course the SGF and others would assist him. Uh, I'm not sure the report said that um, they will be, will be in charge of the country together. I think so. I think it's probably the way it was reported. Uh, the vice president constitutionally is the person who takes charge after the president is um, out of the country on vacation. And then, of course, the government is a machinery in, of, of its own. There are people in the government that would also assist. Nobody does the work alone, like um, was rightly said by the president. So I do not think that he said he handed over power to the vice president and this SGF and somebody else to run jointly. I do not think that's what he meant. That, that's what um, the president said. But that, having said that, the vice president, of course, um, uh, is in charge. Um, whether or not a letter was transmitted, we cannot really say because we haven't seen it. And like I mentioned, the lack of transparency um, from this government is one of the um, things that has you know, been a problem for the past um, six years and counting. Legally speaking, if the vice president is not empowered through a letter that's being transmitted to the National Assembly to authorize him to run the state of affairs, what exactly can he do? Uh, well, I think the provisions of the Constitution are quite clear. Section 5 of the Constitution clearly vests the executive powers in the president. And of course, he can assign as, as such functions to the vice president or any other officer of government um, to carry out those, such uh, activities. So I, I do not think, uh, even if we look at Section 145 of the Constitution, um, of course, there's a, there's a window, there's a uh, 21 days, I mean, uh, we're failing which you can now begin to commence uh, proceedings to impeach him. It's only gone for about two weeks, that's about 14 days. Uh, according to his aides. So I believe that um, we're not at that point where we can panic. It's, there's, no, there's no cause for alarm yet. Uh, and like I said, you know, all of, all, all of this is still basically conjecture. If tomorrow the uh, presidential aides come out and issue the letter or the Senate president confirms that he indeed received the letter, then, I mean, our fears will have been uh, taken care of. Mm. Professor, I'm going to propose the same question to you. Without this letter, what are the powers of the vice president? Can we assume that he's piloting the affairs of the country with or without this letter? And I'm not saying that Nigeria is going to face anything tomorrow, but yes, we are facing a, a fuel crisis, and Nigerians are very angry at the fact that the president, who is, by the way, the minister of petroleum, uh, has left the country amidst this crisis. Yes, most will say he's going to take care of his health, which is important, but what powers do the vice president, uh, what power does he wield as we speak without that letter? Well, take it from the point of uh, what can he do if he has the letter? He can discharge all the functions of the president if he has the letter. But without the letter, he will be able to preside over meetings, uh, he will be able to handle such other things as he has to do, that the president ordinarily ought to do, but functions and responsibilities that are assigned to the president, he cannot discharge those functions. Specifically assigned by the constitution to the president, he cannot discharge such uh, functions without the later transmitting presidential power to him. Now, the Civil Rights Advocacy Group, uh, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria, today uh, chastised the, the president um, uh, uh, for frequent medical trips overseas. Now, I'd like to quote them directly. In a statement by the National uh, Coordinator, Comedy Manuel Omubiko faulted the president, saying he perpetually travels uh, to London for medical checkup while leaving the health sector in Nigeria to wobble amid constant strikes and underfunding. And they also made mention of the medical tourism and the monies that we keep sending to the United Kingdom. Care to comment? Professor? Well, um, or the prof, yeah. Well, well um, first, it's a democracy and everybody is entitled to his opinion. And as citizens, they are entitled uh, to be concerned about what we are spending as a nation uh, in president, the president's uh, health care and the president's uh, well-being. 
However, um, you elected your president. And if your president has health challenges, but in the opinion of his doctors and those who manage his health, uh, they think that he can find solution or the best solution available to um, the best approach to it is to find experts overseas. Then it is part of what you bargain for in voting for your president. Um, it's sad. Every responsible country should do everything to ensure that all formal transactions and formal activities of the president are undertaken within the country. But that's not what you have. Uh, we have not been able to move our health facilities to that point. It's also a shame that we admit that uh, by having our public functionaries, not only the president, the president, vice, uh, um, governors, and their aides, uh, we have them all the time going overseas for treatment, which is uh, a judgment on us, a verdict on us that we are not, uh, we are not serious, we are not a serious country, and we do not value our sovereignty. Uh, expectedly, we should see things change from that direction, and we should see the president and other government functionaries take their treatments here in Nigeria and educate their children here in Nigeria. Those are all votes of no confidence that uh, public uh, administrators uh, have no interest and uh, have no faith in what they are administering in the country. And let's hope that we will learn that and uh, that we will improve in how we present ourselves before the international community. And when you say we will learn and we will improve, it's, you, you make it seem like we have the powers to change it because if you ask me, um, there have been protests. In fact, as we speak, there's several strikes, strike actions, the ones that are being threatened and the ones that are about to happen. And these, are, these strikes are coming as a result of the fact that there has been failure of government on several forums, whether it be education, um, transport, I mean, generally. Um, so if all of these strike actions, these conversations, these protests have not been able to yield or even arm twist our political leaders. And this is not just about President Buhari, but all our leaders subsequently who are very quick to go abroad. I mean, let's use, for example, the former Kwaibom State Governor, um, Gospel Loboda Kwabi. I think he, he said he built a state-of-the-art medical facility um, in the exactly. state. And he had a, 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 minor, a minor health um, you know, issue, and he flew out of the country. So again, do we really have what it takes to get these people to do right by us? It's simple. Um, first, whatever we need, whatever medical facilities that are available anywhere in the world can be bought. And we have the way with that to buy it. We can also create the condition for experts. We have the manpower here, and our doctors are doing well overseas and, and doing fantastic things. So we can create the enabling environment and bring the facilities that are required, and they can do what they have to do here. So the question, can we? Can we learn and can we improve? Yes. There's no reason why we shouldn't. But we have just not had that political will to do so. And uh, we think it is normal to continue the way we are doing. And I believe that's why uh, they have continued and they do not see anything wrong with it. Uh, Ayadeja, I want to bring you in here. Uh, do you agree with the professor that we do not have the political will? But again, uh, he's, he made mention of the fact that we elected the president. There are lots of people who say that we did not elect the president. But what, whatever the case may be, our leaders are our leaders. They're in place. What is stopping us from getting our leaders to be accountable to us? Because every day we sit here and have these conversations. Some of us grumble on social media. But then nothing really changes year in, year out. And this is campaign season. They're about to come tell us new stories. So is it us that's the problem or is it the politicians? Uh, well, uh, I think I'll just start from uh, the point of Buhari's, uh, President Buhari's made several trips abroad. And I would like to say categorically that it's my opinion that uh, the president is very hypocritical in that regard. Because if you all recollect, um, he was very, very vocal about uh, our other political leaders at the time going abroad for medical treatment. And he did promise that he would ensure that um, he improves the health sector and he would not engage in medical tourism. Uh, but of course, time has shown that uh, that was just uh, a mere promise. And he, uh, several trips that he's undertaken abroad clearly evidence that. Well, as it relates to whether or not um, the political will is there, I want to agree with Prof that yes, the political will is not there. But I also think that the large section of the population um, who actually determine who the voters are. Uh, do not really care about 
some of these things that we are talking about. They are not. So some of them will say we are too elitist. We right? will sit in the comfort of our offices, of our homes, and we theorize about uh, politics and theorize about how the country should be, and why we are not exactly more involved in grassroots politics. And, if, and uh, as, they say, uh, this, as the saying goes, uh, um, um, in politics, all politics is local. I'm not sure that many of the allies uh, belong to any political party or actively involved in any grassroots movement. So, and that's, that's why we can't really hold them accountable. Because as you can see now, some of the political actors are going from um, uh, palace to palace, from state to state, uh, paying homages and, um, you know, doling out the right they need to get the job done. Uh, I do not see uh, this same active drive from the uh, civil society, from other interested political actors, campaigning against uh, some of these um, elect electoral malpractices that would likely occur. So there really needs to be some form of um, activism from the elites. We can't just sit down and on social media and don't just complain about it. We need to be more involved in it. For instance, now we have people amongst us uh, when I say us, I mean those of us working class, elites, the academia, in other professions, who just think that the best option is to leave the country, travel to Canada, travel to Australia, leave the country for these politicians to continue to rule. But unless we actually realize that we all have a stake in this country, the country will not move forward. And mm -hmm. you can see that as it happened with um, um, our citizens that were living, who were either studying or residing in Ukraine. All of a sudden, overnight, they became refugees. And that's what happens when you don't develop your own country. So we all need to, um, you know, get down to it together and not just leave it to the politicians. But for instance, if I take it to the Electoral Act, um, there's a lot required for, for financing elections, campaign, materials. Uh, I mean, you know what it takes to undergo um, a tour of Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is a very vast, uh, very vast country. You have somebody who has done about eight to nine or ten states. So tour the whole of the country is a lot of money that is required. Uh -huh. And those monies need to be recouped as well. So um, we also need to put our money where our, 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 our money where our mouth is. We also need to either crowdfund or you know get people who are actively involved, people who have integrity in these things, people who have a stake in the nation, not just to leave it to the old men. I mean, some, one aspirant said that we have eight years. He will do his own eight years, and then we youths can come back and do it hours after time. So that's some confidence um, that he has. And uh, he, that confidence is not just because he, he is just saying it. He's done the homework, and he, he believes that, going by his own calculations, he will do it yes there. So we need to be more involved in the process. Prof, let me come back to you. Let's, uh, um, you know, piggyback a bit on the issue of corrupt practices, which will be my second topic for today. But let's look at the um, outright disobedience of the Constitution or the rule of law in this country, especially by this government. Um, the many times that we've seen... Um, the federal government, led by President Buhari, pick and choose what laws to obey. Just as Ayadeji has said, um, the president being hypocritical in terms of this issue of health uh, and health medical tourism. For someone who had um, campaigned that he was going to put an end to corruption and plug all the loopholes, um, someone who said he was going to fight insecurity, and, and, and f from what we see... What really fuels all of these conflicts and crises at, at the bottom of it or at the core of it is corruption. Um, why do you think that this government, the one that was touted as the messiah of Nigeria, seems to be the one who's breaking most of the rules, if not all of them? Well, first, um, I think we have come to terms with the fact in this country that uh, campaign time is campaign time, and that uh, you hear all manner of beautiful things, uh, and that um, governance is a different ballgame. Uh, our experience in this direction has been consistent uh, over the years. Uh, we've had it's difficult to cite instances where uh, campaign promises were pursued with seriousness and kept uh, the way they were made at the times of campaign. Uh, that said, I, I'd like to. Uh, for myself, so that I think that the candidate that was voted in the first term uh, was not exactly the candidate we eventually got. I believe that after the major health issue that the president had, and I must say, in all my uh, uh, age, I have not read 
any day of the president is before he became president. But after that, the blood transmission three times. Oh, I think we're having a connection issue there with you, Prof. Uh, unfortunately, you're breaking. Um, I'm going to see if we can get Ayodeji to quickly attempt that until we can get the Prof back. Ayodeji. Okay. Well, I, well, I think, um, you know, uh, what Prof was trying to say is um, that the, uh, the promises that were made um, in 2015, I mean, 2014, 2015, which you know made Nigerians to overwhelmingly, because I would say that overwhelmingly, uh, the president was voted into office because a lot of Nigerians at the time were very disappointed with the presidency of um, uh, Good Lord Ibele Jonathan, and uh, that still remains a fact. No matter how much you try to revise history, um, Professor Jonathan, you know, he did his best, but it wasn't good enough at the time. Uh, so when we when President Bai was elected, in, he was elected with several promises. Um, everybody had high hopes, thinking that this anti-corruption um, Caesar, uh, this uh, Messiah, would not allow um, corruption to thrive in this country anymore. But what we have seen, I mean, is a far cry from what we expected. Um, although I, I wouldn't say that the president has failed entirely. Um, there have been a lot of infrastructural developments all over Nigeria as well. I mean, if I give that to the president, even though some would say that it was commenced under uh, President Jonathan, but you've seen that he's gone ahead to, to, to finish some of these things. Uh, he didn't abandon them, like some other governors or other people, political officers will do. They abandon and start their own. But he finished up all of these things, and there are a lot of gains that we have, he has recorded. But um, as it relates to promises, I mean, easily you find um, um, on Twitter, you find those slogans, those banners that were held up in 2015, that they will make $1, one dollar to one forty something. Are you happy with the way Nigeria is? Are you happy with the bag of rice? The cost of a bag of rice. Are you happy with everything? But it looks like um, it, it's it's worse than we expected. And I think every every reasonable Nigerian who is true to, to himself or herself knows that this girl, this president has has done his best, but the best is not good enough. So it's campaign season now. Um, we are going to have a lot of promises in the next um, twelve months uh, from all 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 and sundry. Everybody wants to put their hat in the ring and try to buy for the office. But I, I know that Nigeria is really a very tough country to govern in terms of what we've seen over the years. The best men have tried and failed. Um, they, all, they all keep mentioning and referring to a cabal. Uh, that cabal has remained nameless over the years. Mm. Uh, so I think anybody that, has, uh, that wants to be president needs to have the, the determination uh, to break this cabal. And the question that you need to ask is, can anybody become president of this country without the cabal support? Uh, like I said, the cabal is nameless and it's faceless, but they all seem to agree that it's a cabal. So mm. um, we are the mercy of these politicians. And like I said, unless we get actively involved in the process and stop you know, our armchair criticism and our pontification, we will need to get involved and start at the grassroots level, try and mobilize some of this, um, I wouldn't say illiterates, but people who are not politically, politically savvy. People who, who can vote for, for 3,000 naira. But I, 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 it's interesting that you made mention of these people who are not as politically savvy as you and I. Um, half the time, those of us who are in the second class or middle class um, seem to be the ones who sit at home and, like you say, pontificate and never really show up for, you know, to vote. But these guys that you think are, are, are you know, illiterate uh, when it comes to the, the electoral process, they come out en masse, whether they're paid or not, they show up to vote. So does that not make us look bad one way or the other? So when we say we all have to get involved, how do we get involved? Those of us who are in the middle class, what exactly do you think is the pushback? Why are we so comfortable uh, with just sitting down and murmuring or making excuses? Uh, well, I think that the reason why we're very comfortable or why we're very laid back is because some of us have some um, economic buffer that it allows us to get away with a few things, okay? So, um, do we? I mean, I'm that... sure that you're also affected by the fuel scarcity. So is, that, is there really oh, a buffer yes. for that? Oh, okay, okay. So, so I'll tell you something. Um, you have those, uh, those selling black markets. Anybody in the middle class who has some money to spend would, was, I mean, would easily get a black market uh, for 7,000 naira. Now, those poor people can't do that. They can't afford it. They need to line up and need to queue at the police station. They don't have that luxury of being able to part away, part with some money and buy a black market uh, fuel, jerry can, and move on with their lives. 
Uh, some of us can do that and you know pay, pay our way through the inconvenience. These people do not have the luxury of paying their way through the inconvenience. So they are there at the market stores. They are there, they are buying, they are finding it difficult to even feed because things are expensive. I mean, uh, some of us, I'm not sure whether uh, Prof knows the value, how, how much a uh, bag of rice is or how much you, whether you even know how much a bag of rice is now. But these people know how much a cup of it, a difficult rice is. They know how it has increased exponentially. They know how much Gary is now. I'm not sure if you know how much a cup of a tin of Gary is. So like, what I'm saying is, at the middle class, we're able to pay our way through some of these things and not be bothered about it. So we mm. just throw money at it and move on. Mm. Back to you, Prof. Apologies uh, that uh, we had that break in uh, the communication. Um, quickly, let's look at the timing of the president's travel and just go, you know, drawing from what Ayodeji has been saying, the timing of this travel. There's a lot of groaning and grinding of teeth in the country right now. First, it was the case of adulterated fuel. And then now we don't even see the fuel to buy. And just as Ayodeji said, a few people can afford the... The, the black market, but I mean, the timing of this move by Mr. President, plus the fact that, you know, power has not necessarily been transmitted, even though it's two weeks, a lot can happen in two weeks. How insensitive is this? Uh, and really looking at the situation of things, where do we really go from here? Because it looks like it's going from bad to worse. Uh, it's what, what we would clearly and easily have said is uh, absolutely insensitive. Um, especially if it is not pressing, and if it is something that he could have done after this time. Uh, just that when it borders on health, and if there are timelines and um, dates to be kept uh, in medical transactions, it's a bit, dif it's a bit difficult to pass judgment. Uh, so if it is a necessary medical check uh, on a timeline, an existing timeline from previous travels, uh, then it will be difficult to uh, absolutely say that he was completely insensitive. Otherwise, the timing is wrong. But while the president was with... here, before he went for his medical trip, we're still yet to hear anything concrete from the president on this issue, being that he holds that office. He decided to keep that office to himself. And so going, going, every appoint, every, every finger minister. should point to Mr. President, shouldn't it? Exactly. I was going to say so that as petroleum minister, this would be an insensitive time to travel if it's not a necessary medical travel or a medical trip that is necessary. It would be an insensitive time to do so. Um, there may not be very pressing things in other areas, but this one rests on his table. And why he is petroleum minister, it will clearly be insensitive, except if he has the defense of explaining that it's a necessary appointment that is a necessary follow-up from other previous, other previous uh, medical trips on which we spent money so that it doesn't become wasted money. Uh, that would be the only defense. Mm. Finally, before I let you go, gentlemen, um, have we learned? How, do you think that Nigerians are tired enough to be sensible uh, as to how we pick our next set of leaders? Or uh, do we just you know, keep making more space in the wall as we're being pushed to it? Um, I, I do not think we have shown evidence of, uh, of good learning. Uh, we have had a lot of lessons over the years. We've not quite translated them uh, into useful experience that results in decisions that we can see from our actions. So I, I think we have not shown enough, uh, enough uh, understanding of the experience we have had and what we should have learned from them. Um, do we expect much? I do not expect much. All I can say is that the new Electoral Act makes, makes some promises and has some openings, which, if we utilize them well, I'm sure will lead to improvement in the kind of choice and decision we make. Let's always remind ourselves, even when it looks like there is nothing we can do, we must always ask ourselves, why do they buy up our cards? Why do they buy up our PVCs at that time, if what we do with the PVC is not useful. Mm. I think there's a lot of work to be, to be done um, to change the psyche of the people and reassure them that, look, you can make decisions by effectiveness of their card. If we do sufficient sensitization, we may be able to get some positive results. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Ayodeji, before we go, quickly. Uh, well, I think I also agree with Prof. 
uh, that we need to buckle uh, down to it. Somebody's, and, somebody's uh, television is on. We, we, can you turn off your TV, please? So I think we need to get involved in the process actively. We need to um, and, and get involved at the grassroots level and not just, you know, uh, continue to, like I said, uh, give our own theories about how this can work. We need to be involved. And I think that all people of the middle class, upper class Nigerians need to be, need to finance and need to fund this grassroots movement, sensitize those who need, uh, who actually uh, sell their goods, that we, can, we all have a stake in this. If, if like Prof said, if our PVCs are not important, they won't be buying it. Mm. They, won't be sell, they won't be sharing rice and sharing oil and sharing money on election day. It's because those, the vote actually counts. So we can't just sit down in our houses and use election day as a deal to rest or to read the newspaper. It should be a day to be out there on the streets to take back our government. And I think that's what we should do. Well, I want to say thank you to Professor Richard Wokocha. He is a professor of public law at the River State University. And Ayo Deji Awobiyide is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you for having me. All right. Thank you for staying with us. We will take a short break now. And when we return, former President Olusha Gorbassinger states that some of the presidential aspirants are supposed to be in prison. We'll get to find out why. Stay with us.